In the 1970s, the City of Angels thrummed with energy. Iconic boulevards shimmered under the California sun, shadowed by palm silhouettes and framed by grand movie palaces. As vinyl records spun tales of rock and disco, the streets themselves told a different story, even in the rhythm of its sprawling bus network. To most, these buses were just a mode of transit, a vessel for getting from one corner of the city to the other. But to one man, they were all part of a flawed network, one that he believed he could outsmart. From tricking a bus driver into informing him where he could get a punch card machine, to dumpster diving in trash bins at bus terminals, looking for carelessly discarded blank transfers, the man who noticed patterns in the tickets, the numbers, the dates, and the routes they indicated, was able to replicate his own and travel the vast network of LA without ever having to pay a dime. This was no man at all, but at the time, a 12-year-old boy called Kevin Mitnick. As physical processes and networks evolved into the digital, to Kevin, they remained vulnerable. At the age of 16, Kevin would hack into a system at one of the largest computer companies at the time. Convicted and arrested in 1988, he'd spend a year in prison before hacking into another system at the end of his probation. This time, it was Pacific Bell, the largest Bell operating company in the Western United States. Subsequently, he fled the law and became a fugitive for two and a half years, during which he violated multiple laws to keep his identity hidden, before being found, arrested, and imprisoned again from the years 1995 to 1999. Eight months of which were spent in solitary confinement because a judge was convinced that he could whistle into a prison payphone and start a nuclear war. In cybersecurity, there's this concept that revolves around hats. These hats are indicative of a hacker's motivations. We have black hats, white hats, and gray hats. Black hats are your everyday cyber criminals. The ones that you see depicted with dark hoodies hunched over their keyboards. They break into systems with malicious intent, whether it be for personal gain, data theft, or simply to cause chaos. Often the villains of the digital world. The white hats, in contrast, are known as ethical hackers. Those that have the knowledge and skills to do just as much damage as the cyber criminals, or more, but choose to operate within the law. A majority of these white hats are hired by organizations to test their security systems constantly for vulnerabilities. The gray hats straddle the line between the ethical and the malevolent. They may, without permission, hack into a system and then report these to the relevant organization or disclose it publicly as stern reminders of the organization's security posture. Though their methods may always be questionable, their intent isn't always malicious. When Kevin Mitnick was finally released in the year 2000, he would go on to become a security consultant for hire in several Fortune 500 companies, authoring multiple best-selling books in the field of cybersecurity and educating organizations, as well as government agencies, on how to best defend themselves. Soon, he would become infamous in the field of security, with his name plastered over books and his story used as the basis for movies for years and years to come. In 2004, he would go on to start his own private security company called Mitnick Security Consulting and then almost a decade later, becoming the chief hacking officer and partial owner of No Before, a security awareness training company that primarily focuses on training employees to better identify and handle security risks. From being one of the most wanted hackers to a trusted security professional, from a feared black hat to a reputed white hat, Kevin Mitnick's story serves as a powerful reminder of curiosity, consequence, and redemption a story that isn't as uncommon as you may think in the field of security.